In the last several months, media headlines have been consumed by potential tips, tricks, and treatments for COVID-19. We've covered a few of these, but we've generally ignored the vitamin D headlines because, well, you might already know how I don't think too highly of vitamin D supplementation. So that's the topic of this week's healthcare triage. To the vitamin D research. A study published in the beginning of September examined 489 patients who had their vitamin D level measured in the year before they were tested for COVID. They found that the relative risk of testing positive was 1.77 times greater for patients with likely deficient vitamin D status. Another study published later in September reported an association between vitamin D level and clinical outcomes in 235 hospital patients. There are more, but you get the idea. So yes, there are studies to suggest a relationship between vitamin D and COVID, but we also have studies that suggest no relationship. One of them, published this summer, found no correlation between vitamin D level and confirmed COVID cases in a sample of over 500,000 participants. Unless we forget, all of these studies are observational, which of course means we have absolutely no picture of cause and effect. I repeat, we have no evidence showing that vitamin D levels directly impact susceptibility to or clinical outcomes of COVID-19. The only way we can get that kind of evidence is by running a, you know what I'm going to say here, randomized controlled trial. And good news! Several trials are underway, and we certainly look forward to the results. So, for now, all we can say is that in some studies, low vitamin D levels and COVID-19 happen a lot in the same people. In other studies, they don't. Things like ice cream consumption, Netflix binging, and doom scrolling on Twitter also happen in a lot of the same people that test positive for COVID. And hopefully that sentence helps you understand why observational data cannot be used to determine whether something causes something else. But in all seriousness, if a relationship exists, we have no idea yet whether vitamin D is causal or reflective of susceptibility to COVID or degree of symptoms. I'm not saying it isn't worth looking into. Researchers have been investigating this because vitamin D, among its other roles, is known to play a supporting role in the response to viral infections. And a systematic review and meta-analysis of randomized controlled trials examining vitamin D supplementation and risk of acute respiratory tract infection did find a positive effect. But that effect was most prominent in patients who were very vitamin D deficient, which brings us to a point I've hammered on in previous videos. You probably already have enough vitamin D to do whatever it is vitamin D needs to be doing. I am not against vitamin D. Everyone needs it. It is important for lots of stuff, but most people have plenty of vitamin D without even trying. Piling on extra is very likely not a Hail Mary for COVID-19 or anything else for that matter. And if you watch previous healthcare triage videos on this particular vitamin, you'll know that studies examining low vitamin D levels often use cutoff points that aren't usually seen in healthy people. And to complicate all of this further, there's pretty much no consensus on what constitutes low vitamin D levels anyway. For example, in the first three studies I mentioned, sufficient levels were defined as more than 20 nanograms per milliliter, more than 30 nanograms per milliliter, and more than eight nanograms per milliliter, respectively. Before you head to the comments section, hear me out. Yes, some people need vitamin D supplements. I've said before that pregnant women, asthma patients, and some people in climates with little sun may need an extra boost, but most people don't. Most people have sufficient levels already. And yes, it is true that Dr. Fauci has said in interviews about COVID-19 that he doesn't mind recommending vitamin D supplements. However, he does begin by saying that a deficiency in vitamin D can affect susceptibility, not that dosing up from a normal level has been shown to prevent or fight the virus. So I stand by my usual vitamin D skepticism and my basic reminders that one, supplements are very poorly regulated in the United States, so it's generally hard to know what you're getting, and two, too much vitamin D can in fact hurt you. But more than that, my concern is that taking a supplement with the belief that it is protective against COVID-19 will result in people engaging less in behaviors that we know are protective, like masking and social distancing. I don't know why so many people want to believe in vitamin D as a cure so badly, but resist so strongly what we know can help. 
It's not cool. Hey, did you enjoy this episode? You might enjoy this previous episode on acetaminophen and risk-taking behavior. We'd appreciate it if you'd like and subscribe down below. And if you'd consider going to patreon.com slash healthcare triage, where you can help support the show even during a global pandemic. We'd especially like to thank our research associates, James Glasgow, Joe Sevitz, Josh Gister, and Michael Chin, and of course, our Surgeon Admiral Sam.